Hello and welcome to my Minecraft Let's Play Part 20. So, a couple, several new things have happened. Number one, I've got three new mods installed. First one is a timber. It's called Timber. It's by to crush, and it makes it so when you chop down the bottom log of a tree, the whole tree goes down, which is very useful, especially for what I've got over there. The second mod, also by to crush, is the hidden door mod, where if you get six bookcases or bookshelves like this, you can make a hidden door that then will take on the texture of whatever block you place it on, which is as useful as it sounds. So I've got plans for that, but because bookshelf, but uh, it basically takes nine paper to make that to make a bookcase, and so I'm going to need a lot of paper. So I converted my wheat farm into reeds. And uh, well, they're farming reeds, and I've been collecting reeds for a while. I'm getting close to having enough, and I will uh, definitely show what I got planned for that because I've got some cool stuff planned to do with the hidden doors once I've got the hidden doors. But yeah, and the third mod is I have Rost Black Dragon's Doggy Talents mod that adds a bunch of cool things. Uh, for instance, you can name your dogs, you can change the color of their collars, and you can train them with different talents. There are eight different talents, and as you train them, their health will go up. And to bring this little screen up, you right-click them with a stick in your hand. Oops. Ooh, 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 ooh. Sit. Get back on the bed. <laughs> and um, what you do is you need two items. Well two things. First, you need bones. Bones are consumed at, during the uh, leveling process. The other item is you need something, one of these eight items. Saddle, glowstone, feather, leather, gunpowder, flint, and the wrapper, iron ingot. Um, these are not consumed. So, for example, if I take the saddle and grab some bones out of my chest here, which I should probably point out before I get into this, the, um, I did not cheat or anything to get all these bones. Actually, what I did is I built my mob grinder that I've been saying I would build for a while. Um, I have it deactivated at the moment, but it's a basic little, uh, drowning pit. The, um, I eventually, I try. I would have recorded it, but it, um, I tried to make it two blocks wide to catch the spiders as well, before I remembered that spiders can climb w walls, and it was generally just a lot of frustration and boring video, so I eventually said, mess with this, just cut it all out. The, um, just gonna come up here. I've got the water here, and actually that reminds me, I broke the end block of water, but anyway, I've got the water here, and then if I take these out, it'll flow down, the mobs will spawn, you get the idea. Just, yeah, drowning traps are pretty easy to make, except that when I did, I hadn't done it in a while, and so I, of course, couldn't remember how to do it, and so, yeah, kind of fail on my end, but I eventually got it going. And sat in it for a few days to get all these bones, and then this chest is a bunch of arrows. So, let's see here. Move this over there. So then you right-click it with a saddle, and those hearts indicate that... It, wow, okay, that was really fast. It doesn't usually happen that fast, but you see now it's got 5 out of 5 on wolf mount. The early... It, the um, It's really easy at first, because it's a random chance, but it's a really good chance that you'll succeed at first. But then, as you get higher up in level, it gets harder and harder. Well, it takes more and more bones to level them up. So it takes longer and longer to get them to uh, a higher level of mastery. But if you can get it to level 40 mastery, which is the maximum, then their health ends up being level 40. So there we go. So now I've given it... Uh, Pillow paw and wolf mount. Wolf mount means you can actually ride it like this. So you can see I'm actually literally riding it, which is quite cool. 
feather fall, or actually pillow paw, means that it um, will not take fall damage because it will fall slowly. The um, netherrack, you train it with netherrack and it will give you the hellhound skill which um, makes it immune to lava and fire, which is very useful. Um, glowstone, training it with glowstone, it'll make it so that if you feed it with pork when it's at full health, it'll spawn torches. Um, and then there's one that increases attack damage, there's one that increases defense, and there's one that sets it so occasionally during combat with hostile mobs, it'll spawn raw pork. I cannot remember which... There it okay, is, so it's done there. Which of the three it is. And then the gunpowder um, gives it creeper sweeper, so let's see. This is hunter dog. Flint gives you the one that uh, trains... Uh, training it with Flint will make it spawn uh, pork in combat. As you can see, it's taking more and more much time to get it to level. See, it just leveled again there. And also, one thing it adds is it enables them... Uh, it sets them so they'll never die. If they take enough damage to that they would normally die, they're simply incapacitated, and you have to feed them cake, and then they go back to full health, and they'll fight for you some more. The, um... You know, let's see, let's do Creeper Sweeper next. The, um... So naturally, I'm going to need uh, some way of produ pre produce, uh, producing cake, and so oh. I've been thinking that I'm going to um, expand that way, you know, my reed farm. I keep the reed farm, but expand it to be growing cacti and um, wheat in small amounts, but at least, or probably have a spot where I would grow wheat, and also be growing not be growing, but have a large area of, with just grass in it, grass and light, to be spawning chickens and cows and pork and pigs um, there, so I can just go down and kill a few to get eggs, or just pick up the eggs that are dropped, that kind of thing. So, that's my plan as far as that's concerned. So, okay, I'm out of bones, trying to get the next stack here. So this will take, oops, good, or not oops, <laughs> uh, let's see, did that one, let's do this one. Now, you could make this go faster by rapidly right-clicking, like that, but I don't want to wear out my mouse, so I'm just holding it down. Yeah, iron raises guard dog. The, um, I think guard dog is the one that increases its attack, but I can't remember. So, I'll I'll link to the uh, Minecraft forum topic that uh, okay. talks all about it. So, it's now at mastery level 40, and it's at 5 out of 5 out of all skills. One thing I should mention, the Creeper Sweeper skill, it is a rather useful skill in that if there's a creeper nearby, it will, or the wolf will growl and warn you of the nearby creeper, which is quite useful because it tells you that there's, you know, there's a creeper nearby. The, um... Also, the other news, good news, is that now that I've got a bunch of arrows, I'll be able to use my bow. One final thing I need to mention is I've improved this room quite a bit. I have five furnaces, five macerators, a recycler. I uh, recycled all of my nether rack and got 64, well, not 60, uh, two stacks of 64 random scrap. Three compressors, two extractors, and the four crystal chargers. I also have the switch that turns those redstone torches on and off. It also switches over there, goes over there, and it splits and goes off that way turn this switch cable on or off. In its off state, the power goes into the normal machines like normal, 
it's on, it'll be routed up into nothing because I haven't hooked it up yet. But eventually, excuse me, it'll go up, over, and then around. And I'll put a mass fabricator here and here. So then I'll know that if I flip the switch down, they'll go on. I'll know the mass fabricators are getting all power being produced by my power plant. Which, speaking of which, I added another 12 water generators, MFE transmitter, and, well, 12 water generators, one MFE transmitter, uh, a handful of switch cables, and some ordinary cables. So, effectively doubling the amount of energy being produced. Which is good, which is good. And... Okay. So I think that's pretty much everything. And so now I guess I'll get to back to work on my plans. The Industrial Craft Squared mod went into open beta a few days ago, as of when I'm making this video, and um, it's very cool looking. It's going to base. It's a diff. It's a completely different mod with a lot of similarities, if that makes any sense. In that, it's industrial craft in feel, but it's different. For example, what was that? Hm. Whatever. Um, for example, the recipe for water generators now only gives you one water generator instead of the two that it does in Industrial Craft 1. So it's little tweaks like that that make me, that means I'm going to be spending the rest of my Industrial Craft 1 time, which I'm estimating to be a couple weeks, um, doing everything I can to get ready for Industrial Craft 2. So when I upgrade to Industrial Craft 2, I'm already prepared, I've got everything ready to go, so it's so I have an advantage as opposed to switching now, for example. So that basically means cave exploring and gathering resources and building mass generators and getting a bunch of um, matter created. So yeah. But before I go off back and exploring the caves some more, I'm going to... I guess I can bring you with me, too. Uh, let's see, actually... Hold on one second. There, okay, now I'm ready. I'm going to go and explore out a bit, make a few tweaks to my base. For starters, I have this plan to build an underwater base at some point. And I had this brilliant idea for how I wanted to, to get into my underwater base. Let's see. It's good. Because you might remember that there's this other staircase here. So it suddenly dawned on me one day that what I all I would have to do is reopen this and make this room large enough that I can switch which staircase I'm on as I am running by at full nano boot speed and then I can simply make this path instead of going all the way up to the surface then suddenly veer sharply downward so I thought that was pretty cool when I figured it out. Let's see, I'll seal off this direction. Good. <laughs> Sandstone, great. Pull this out. Because I don't want to go up, I actually want to then need to go right back down again. So let's just test this here. So, running at full speed. 
Yes, perfect. That's exactly what I was hoping for. So... There. There. I don't really know what I need an underwater base for, or why I would create said underwater base. It's kind of like my nether tower. My nether tower is really cool. Do I have a use for it? Not really. But you know what? I figure if I ever have a need for another tower, I have another tower. I just hope I get deep enough down that I don't hit anything I shouldn't hit. Oh. I'm gonna hit a cave here. This is interesting. I did not anticipate hitting a cave. Hmm. Well, I need iron. Sure don't need feathers though. Lots of zombies in this cave. Ow. This is why I tried to bring my wolf with me, and then, you know what? Alright, it'll take me like, what, 10 seconds to run back and grab my wolf? Whoa, massive lag there. Explore that way in a minute. I'm just looking at the basic area here. Okay, that area is connected to each other. That's good to know. Oops. Great, more caves. Just when I thought that I would, I was starting to finally finish that extremely big cave network that's the one that's basically connected to my tree farm, and then I and then I discovered this. And again, I'm not complaining. I'm just bemused by all these caves. Coal, always a plus. Gravel, I'm not particularly fond of gravel. I'm not particularly fond of getting pushed around by my wolf. lag here. I wonder why. More iron. Very nice. Oh, I like this kind of cave. But that's kind of clever. A little loop like that. Huh. Huh. <laughs> There's the rest of the cave. Explore that in a second. And hey, you walk in with me. I get the feeling that I'm not going to be bringing my wolf much. Simply because their AI isn't that great. 
So it is kind of, I'm slightly amused by the fact that I bring down the wolf and there are no more enemies. So it's funny because the wolf keeps moving because I can't tell whether I'm hearing more than one set of footsteps. I don't think so. It just keeps teleporting around so it's harder to tell. So let's head back this way. Nothing down here. Oh, I see. Okay. Torches. Yep. Oh, okay. This is the water that I saw when I came in. So, so this cave is basically a little loop here. That makes sense. Deposit of tin. More tin. <laughs> Very clever. Suspicious little corridor. Okay. Very nice. So, let's see. Actually, I came this way, right? Well. Just thinking here. Oops. I did not mean to do that. What I don't know is how deep down do I want to go. I think I've gone down far enough to be under the level of the water, which is my only concern. So I think I'm going to start digging horizontally now. Good. Yeah. So now this is where it'll start uh, going straight. All right, I'm gonna take him back to the base. He's starting to really irritate me here.
back to work. If I dug out, it makes sense. I'm hearing monster noises. Great. More caves. I can't catch a break, can I? since I've been here. Still haven't explored up there, apparently. And I still haven't explored wherever those noises are coming from. This is ridiculous. feels suspiciously like a staircase. Huh. Big deposit of iron and coal. Alright. I really ought to get like a mapping program and map out the caves. You know, third party out, out of game mapping program and just to see if these caves are as twisting as I think they are. They certainly feel like they twist all over the place and connect with each other. Because you realize what I did. I was digging a tunnel and I found a new cave that then looped back into the cave I'd already been in. And then from that cave, I got down to one of my first caves. If you recall, the first slime cave I ever found. I think it was the first slime cave I ever found. That was a long time ago. The uh, And then from there, I found an unexplored area that I hadn't gotten to yet. Wow. Back out of that. Go back down this long staircase. Grab the iron and the tin. Replace the torch I just dropped. I'm gonna drop, knock it off. That pack's almost empty, and I haven't even gotten to where I was trying to go yet. In case you're wondering, and to the end. In case you're wondering why I'm gathering all the resources that I'm finding as I find them, it's basically it gets back to the Industrial Craft 2 stuff. I don't really know exactly how it's gonna all work out, and I don't want it to end up short on something because I didn't expect it to be very important, and so I've never been gathering it, and then suddenly. I start end up wishing I'd been gathering it. 
So to avoid that, I'm simply gathering everything I can find.